Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at efficiency. I'm going to look specifically at efficiency when we're looking at firms. Right, we have started off market structures. We now need to bring in uh, the performance evaluation side of market structures. And the way we do it is to compare efficiencies uh, and to see which structures are more efficient than others. These are the main efficiencies we look at. The top three are the power three. They're kind of like the big daddies when it comes to efficiency. They're the three you always try and compare to. There is also this thing called X efficiency, which I'll bring in at the end. So, allocative efficiency. This is the efficiency that looks at the consumer mainly. Okay, are resources being allocated at a point where consumer satisfaction is maximized? Where consumers are demanding a product? Well, well the way we know in basic microeconomics whether that's being achieved is if demand equals supply. As long as demand equals supply, there is allocative efficiency. Well, when we look at business diagrams, the way we map that is simply looking at whether the price is equal to the marginal cost. The marginal cost is the supply curve, the price is just the demand curve, the AR curve. So you could also say where AR is equal to MC, where demand equals supply. If you need to understand that in more detail, look at my video why is allocated efficiency where P equals MC and it will make more sense. But that's the basic point, where price equals the marginal cost, where the demand curve equals the supply curve, we have allocative efficiency. <clears throat> Productive efficiency is all about firms um, minimizing their costs, maximizing production and minimizing their costs, uh, exploiting all economies of scale in doing so. So on a diagram, very simply, Okay. If we have an average cost curve, where we have costs and quantity, well, minimizing costs but maximizing production happens at the bottom of the average cost curve for a firm. Okay, so at that level of quantity, we are minimizing costs okay, and producing the maximum possible we can at that minimum cost level. So the firm is exploiting all available economies of scale. In doing so, it's producing to the max amount at the lowest possible cost. So that's very efficient for the firm. Okay? Minimizing costs but maximizing production at that level of cost. So productive efficiency, all you need to know is that that occurs at the minimum point, okay, so min point on the average cost curve. Okay, and that could also be very good for consumers because it might lead to lower prices. If firms are fully exploiting an economy of scale, instead of being up here on the average cost curve, they're way down here, that means they have lower costs, they might pass on those lower costs to consumers. So productive efficiency is also potentially good for the consumer if those lower costs are passed on via lower prices. <clears throat> we also have dynamic efficiency. Dynamic efficiency occurs over time. Okay, for that to be achieved, there needs to be super normal profits being made by a firm. If there are, then maybe over time, those super normal profits might be reinvested back into the company, maybe in R&D expenditure, innovating new products, uh, trying to develop new technologies, whatever it might be. But the point is, over time, through innovation, through uh, new developments, unit costs will be lowered, which again will be good for the firm and for the consumer over time. Okay, so dynamic efficiency, basic condition, okay, are super normal profits being made? If the answer to that question is yes, so in a monopoly uh, market structure, you might bring in dynamic efficiency and the fact that monopolies can exploit that. So as long as there are super normal profits, you can say that maybe there is a chance this firm could be dynamically efficient because it can reinvest super normal profits and lower unit costs over time. Okay? And finally, X in efficiency. <clears throat> well, if I go back to this same diagram, X in efficiency basically means that there is no waste. If firms are X inefficient, it means they're being wasteful. What does that mean? Well, at this level of quantity, let's say the firm is actually producing a point A. I'll call the minimum point point B. Well, at point A, look at the level of cost costs are way up there, okay, it's C2, but <clears throat> why is the firm doing that? It's being wasteful, because it could produce the same amount of quantity 
at point B. Okay? But at doing so, the cost will be much lower. So in that sense, they're being efficient. So X efficiency very simply occurs at any point on the average cost line. Okay? You might think, well surely that's a bit stupid if firms are at point A, but it can happen. Especially in market structures where there's not much competition, there might be no incentive to lower costs. There might be no need to do so. Also in state sector organisations, health sector for example in the UK, the NHS, the education sector in the, uh, in the UK, you could say it's very X inefficient. Why? Because there's no profit motive in state-run organisations. Therefore there might be a lot of this X inefficiency taking place. There is no motive to reduce costs as a result. So you've got all these four different efficiencies there and these are the, the main efficiencies that we use to compare different market structures. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Nice and simple, don't over-confuse efficiency, it's a lot easier than it might seem. See you next time.